fantastic evening on the panel discussions of the topic leveraging technology for business revival and success on behalf of all my colleagues at your story and on behalf of the entire vodafone idea team i want to welcome you to not one but two panel discussions on the topic of business revival as you all know india and many other countries are moving from lockdown to slowdown the lockdown is being lifted but things are not back to fully normal as yet so companies are moving from uh, survive to revive to thrive hopefully soon we will get to the thrive and business booming as usual stage but right now we are somewhere in the middle so we have two outstanding panel discussions coming up the first one is on from business continuity to business revival this will be moderated by my colleague shraddha sharma the ceo and founder of your story following that there's a second panel on building the digital playbook in current times which will be which will be moderated by myself so for the first panel we have speakers talking on the role of technology to help business pivot from continuity to revival to take this discussion forward i want to introduce the following speakers abhijit kishor director for enterprise services at vodafone idea limited he'll be joined by ajay sagar evp of enterprise business for channels and soho businesses at vodafone india and also navin dachuri cto of yulu in the interest of time i'll give you just a brief background of each of these speakers abhijit enables businesses across industry verticals geographies and sizes to remain connected and scale up using smart technologies interestingly he led the launch of india's first 4g network by vodafone in kerala joining him is ajay segal from uh, vodafone idea she is responsible for driving growth and leading the company's digital telco agenda she has also helped a number of tech driven startups i'm sure there are many startups in the audience he has helped startups like him realize their dreams and help them with go to market gtm strategies and our third speaker is navi who is leading enterprise level projects in a number of sectors he has been in retail finance aviation logistics he is a serial entrepreneur he only earlier co-founded a startup called learnora an online educational platform so to moderate uh, to moderate this panel on from business continuity to business revival i'm going to hand over now to my colleague shraddha sharma ceo and founder of your story shraddha over to you for the next 20 25 minutes thank you thanks so much madam very interesting uh, uh, that we are all logged in from different parts of uh, india today and uh, i'm sure all the participants have also joined us from various parts of the country and we are all going to be talking about technology and business continuity and what better way than to use uh, you know technology to have this conversation and have this conversation uh, uh, you know just telling requesting everyone if you have any questions then put it over here and i'm excited to be talking to people who are experts in this field and who can tell us about business continuity and how to navigate our businesses in this time so with that abhijit i'll i'll come to you you have taken first of all congratulations you have taken a new role in the unprecedented uh, time so uh, a bird which has become equi- ubiquitous to all of us is the unprecedented times uh, so with regards to business continuity in particular i would like to ask you that you know with respects to startup enterprises large companies small companies smes how has vodafone idea equipped itself and its customers if you can share with us yeah sure uh, you know indeed it is a very unusual time that kind of i have and you know uh, unlike uh, many of us 30 60 90 90 day plan when you join a new organization i joined in an organization where uh, you know uh, part of the new role uh, where i got into a bcp uh, invocation right at the beginning uh, and you know the other way of really looking at it is that you know we all prepare ourselves for these eventualities uh, but nobody knows that you know all the bcps has to be invoked at the same time uh, across the globe across the industry so that's that's been a challenging time and as you said it's a pretty unprecedented and challenging time telecom as you know is a part of uh, essential services and uh, our first uh, job was to make sure that you know our employees uh, are safe and are and we are in constant touch with our Uh, customers on one hand and the other hand we were supposed to be making sure that you know, our network uh, runs smoothly seamlessly you know and and we have a pretty large uh, network uh, both on the fixed line as well as on the mobility side uh, as well as on the cloud infrastructure so to make sure that you know everything runs uh, was the first task uh, you know these are the challenging times and to my mind uh, if i were to really look at the two basics that we really focused on you know to take care of the business continuity uh, one was uh, the communication and the second was uh, the connectivity and collaboration uh, and communication becomes extremely critical at this point in time uh, when naturally the lot of queries are there from the customers 
and we need to make sure that you know we are communicating with whatever digital mode that is available uh, to us and and we made sure that you know every single thing that we are updating our customers not only on the products and services and what is of use to them but also on various processes the other thing uh, is that we got in touch with a lot of customers to be series of you know webinars like this we did a survey with the customers to pick up you know what is that they are really looking at so we put together all of this uh, and made sure that you know we are communicating regularly to the customer the second part of the bcp and how we are dealing with it is the is the important part which is the uh, the connectivity and the uh, collaboration now if you were to really look at uh, you know the b2b space uh, the demands of the customers are changing rapidly uh, home as a new office is a new concept you know which has really become uh, the in thing and everybody is really working from home uh, enterprise customers need uh, bandwidth which is scalable you know downgrade upgrade they need more mobile data uh, they need to talk to their own customers uh, and all of this is needed uh, at a much faster speed uh, and with a lot of data security so all of this put together you know uh, we offer our customers a bouquet of services which takes care of all of these things uh, you know and and helps the customer in the initial phases from a business continuity point of view uh it also kind of enhanced their productivity and efficiency to at least get in touch with the customers in the first phase uh and now we are trying to move from a business continuity uh to as madan said you know a business uh, efficiency process that's what we have done till now uh kept in touch with the customers inform them everything made sure that what is the changing need uh is what is available to the customer in various shapes and forms that we can offer abhijit uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for sharing this uh, and i'll come back to you ajay uh, i wanted to ask you with specifically to uh, you know in the context of msme uh, can you share with us examples of how businesses have coped in the last 70 days it has been very tough time how have you seen msmes cope Uh, Shada, thank you so much for arranging this platform. I know that a lot of startups they are pretty uh, anxious to know that what's happening, and especially you know from a telco's lens, you know generally you know since I, since I keep interacting with a lot of them, so generally their question is always around that what's there from the telco's lens. So I thought let me just highlight to you that from telco's lens, you know I'll I'll, I'll put my you know the answer in three different buckets. So first let me quickly. highlight the key trends which we are seeing from the telcos lens what are the key challenges which these small businesses are facing and uh, being a cia member i also want to highlight that what the government of india is doing for these small businesses including startups so even though you know government is trying to create a lot of awareness but still you know during my one to one interaction with many startups i found that people are still not aware about a lot of benefits which government is talking about so if i talk about the key trends you know again from the telcos lens uh, we are talking about data tsunami for quite some time Uh, but that has spurred further actually the, during the last lockdown period the way people are using data and and i was <clears throat> checking you know that india now in the global data traffic is close to 17% of the share which is a pretty high share you know which used to be 1% around two and a half years three years back uh, another trend is that you know which we are experiencing is that non digital customers and most of these small customers who were not paying digitally more than 90% of these customers in the last 70 plus pay days you know have started paying digitally you know which is a big change uh, you know that how people are adopting technology uh, desktop is moving into laptop is one, one of my favorite example which i am experiencing and and that you know whether it's at home or office because all of us at home if there are four family members you know all four are need a laptop or a or a device because all four are busy whether it's a yoga class or a or as or a drum class for me especially as well as any other class in the school you know all the classes are going on similarly in the office also people are working from home so if you have a desktop you can't work from home so you need a laptop so that's the another change and obviously work from home so i did a survey recently uh, which gave me a you know a data point that you know the 40% of the organizations they stated that more than 70% or 75% of their employees they are working from home for the first time in india you know that's the big change according to me because in india people never worked from home you know we have seen that across the globe people used to work from home but being in india you know we still had a mentality that i need to go to office and then only i can work and as as abhijit was talking about home as new office i think that's the new concept when i say home as a new office meaning that home is a full fledged office you know which has a doesn't have doesn't need a you know the band you know the broadband now the home people are asking for that i need a internet lease line i can't work with the broadband uh, you know because the kind of data which i'm using plus i need 
you know products like google meet or any other you know the video conferencing plus i need a complete full fledged you know data security tools because if i am accessing all the data uh, of my office so i need a proper security which should be there and you know for the startup you know all all the startup guys are experiencing by my, during my discussion it is coming out very clearly that investors focus is changing from growth 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 to profit 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 i think that's the new terms which you are using uh, the key challenges you know which which i am i am seeing that people are experiencing both large as well as small organizations you know payment collection is one key challenge you know clearing inventory during my discussion with a lot of builders because i have a lot of builders small builders as a customers and they are saying that collection is becoming a major challenge clearing inventory is a bigger issue and and many small organizations and not only small i would say the large also are saying that optimizing cost structure because revenues are falling so that's the another you know issue which people are or the customers are facing i have heard you know people used to use the term called cash is not a cash is a king but now we can say that cash is not a king you know cash is becoming god which each and every small organization you know they have started talking about and save it for future you know that's the term which people are using it but i i have i have you know the started experiencing one more change which is indoor is new outdoor uh, because you know now everything is happening indoor you know anything and everything is happening indoor so how you know the i can engage with my customers basis the need of the changes because i was talking to one of the guy in the morning and they said that uh, moving forward you know if i if i have to pick up anything i'll call up the guy and i'll say that keep my packet ready i will just go and pick up the packet i will not wait over there because of the lot of security issues which are there and 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 because of that you know there are a lot of new opportunities which are coming up and i think navin is going to talk about that how navin is using you know urban mobility as one key element and i'm just thinking that if today if you ask me that you use ola or uber for your commuting i will say that i i, I want to use cycle or a bike uh, because you know the security uh, is key for me you know for, from that point of view so these are the few changes which which i am experiencing you know by during my interaction with a lot of customers couple of points you know which i want to highlight this is an awareness you know uh, that which government of india is doing one is you know uh, after a lot of effort government has now made changes in the definition of sme you know earlier definition of turnover sorry from investment to turnover is now happening because that was a big ask from all these small businesses micro is now 5 crore you know small is 50 crore and you know the medium size companies are up to 250 crore turnover so that's the big change i think that will get give a lot of advantages for the small businesses you know in cashing all the benefits which government of india is doing uh, three months moratorium become three more months moratorium and now we are pushing uh, you now with the couple of industry bodies that how can we have a more moratorium for the small organizations up till december uh, you know tender up to 200 crores i think people should know that they can only you know only indian companies now can bid for you know government tenders up to 200 crores you know which was not the case earlier so these are the big changes you know which government is talking about i think uh, now you know all these small businesses they can experience that government have started giving you know payments for them within 45 days so i think these are the few changes apart from a lot of collateral free uh, debts and all you know which which government is offering but i thought it's a, it's a good opportunity that people should know but if they want to know more about it i think they can go to ministry of msme website and see what are the other benefits which government is providing for small businesses ajay thank you so much and when you were talking i thought you were talking to all of us because we are all uh experiencing everything that you said <laughs> like uh, cash is actually the god and uh, the only thing i have been interviewing so many people like interview the finance minister to everyone and everyone is today talking about you know the focus required and how cash has suddenly uh, become like you know and then there is a little bit of worry there is a, a concern and i hope things move in the right direction but thank you it uh, i think all of us and every one who's here would uh, relate to what you said uh, navin i'll come to you you're the startup guy here and uh, you know as ajay rightly said uh, you know people are looking at now different options of commuting not net you know so the covid world and the post covid world is different so tell us how have you pivoted to urban mobility and how are you leveraging technology and more importantly i would love to understand are you seeing the difference are you seeing something different in your business now uh, yes right so so i will answer that question in two forms first is like uh, pre covid um everyone used to talk about uh, when it comes to the mobility space about three key words which are three a's accessibility availability and affordability now post covid or during covid one more word has got attached to these three a's which is safety right 
So for us, uh, the biggest thing is how to bring our customers to that comfort zone. Um, how do we tell that we are keeping our bikes safe uh, or sanitized? How do we tell them that since it is a single user ride or a solo ride vehicles, and there are no helmets attached to it, it is it is going to be safe. So these were some of the things that we were focusing, like how do we communicate things, right? So uh, going back to what Abhijit mentioned, uh, communication in the, at the, in this time is has become the most important thing, right? How do we communicate that our bikes are safe to ride? How do we communicate that uh, nothing is going to happen? We as a company are going to take care of these things uh, when it comes to mobility. That was the first aspect. So what we did immediately is we ensure that every vehicle, if it is touched by our field staff guys, it is sanitized. Okay. And by touched, I don't mean like only when the mechanics touch it. Anyone, anyone who touches our vehicle, it is sanitized. So that is on our friend how we are doing from the business side. Now coming to the customers, we had to show them at each and every place when this bike was sanitized. So that that gives them that comfort that our bikes has been sanitized, right? Second thing we started pushing or communicating to our users that no helmets are used because that also becomes uh, for users that uh, that could become a medium for transmission of uh, COVID, right? So these were the two things. And based on that, we did a lot of uh, 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 social media pushes and we did uh, direct one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication with our users to let them know that our bikes are safe to ride, right? And as soon as we launched, what we have seen is our business is back, um, and I would say close to 50 to 60 percent back on the right perspective. But revenue has gone down, to, gone up to 80 percent. What that means is people are using our mode for longer commutes, right? So if we try to translate this, what it means is people are preferring to use solo rides, right, a single user ride, rather than relying on public transportation or a shared mode of transportation. Although we also fall in the same category, but since we only give an option of a solo ride or single ride, people are preferring our service more than any other service. That's the first thing, right? And the second thing is we did a survey to figure out um, how, what people actually want, right? So we did two surveys, one uh, across the uh, global community asking, what of what mode of transportation they would prefer right so there we uh, got a response close to like 2000 uh, customers responded they told like 70 percent would prefer to use a single ride or a solo mobility kind of and um, very there were very small fragment of section who preferred to use uh, uh, any other shared services like public transportation things like that the second survey that we did uh, was within our customer group asking just about our service right and there what folks were telling is 70 percent still agreed to using our vehicles in a sharing mode but there were like close to 20 percent of the segment that wanted to use vehicles um, that they can lease or rent it and just based on this survey what we did is we also launched a new service where uh, our customers can take these vehicles on a renting or leasing model. Um, but again, this was just to cater a very small fragment. But overall, if you look at the picture, 70 people, 70 percent of the people are comfortable riding uh, solo solo vehicles, and among them, 70 percent are comfortable using our sharing um, service as is. Yeah, and I think more data will emerge. In the months right now, yeah, 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 people are just coming back to coming back from the indoors. Uh, Abhijit, you know the word. I think all of us have heard and heard many words we have heard repeatedly. But the one word which is part of all conversation is the new normal. And I want to ask you, what is this new normal? So I think new normal, to my mind, uh, is still in its infancy, and and it's really. Uh, difficult to kind of define that, but one thing uh, is very clear that it's, it's not going to be uh, the same again. And there are different ways of uh, looking at the new normal. Uh, some of the characteristics of the new normal so, uh, would be to uh, what probably I said uh, is going to mitigate the challenges of smart supply and all of the flow is there. Uh, the new normal is also going to be, as I said, from a 
opportunity to uh, business efficiency it's moving from a uh, survival mode to a survival mode uh, business to my mind will have to let me look at the uh, way when you're reaching out the customer and on the customer side to my mind uh, my my sense is the new that a huge amount of uh, you know agility and adaptability of the uh, the digital way of raising uh, so, so that's that's one thing that i think uh, will be there other thing from a business point of view enterprise uh, whether it's large or small point of view it is really uh, you know the whole uh, process or or coming in touch with the customers for change you know we in, in we are all going to in customer having it's all of us Uh, pass so how do we really uh, upskill ourselves in this new environment the other way of really looking at it is that i think there's no better time uh, than now and, and this is for uh, organizations of any shape and size including ours say that is how do we really transform ourselves uh, into a digital world uh, you know we spoke about uh, work from home uh, you know the, the biggest challenge for all the Uh, you know industry and people who are working from home and 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 for the employer uh, is to ensure that there is a data security so how do we kind of ensure that you know what are the productivity tools sitting at home that one can use uh, because not everybody is going out i mean and we are when we are talking to our customers whether it is startup large enterprise you know not more than 15 20% customers have started coming to office uh, and and hence how do we really get in touch with those guys Uh, the other thing which i think is going to be a characteristic of a new normal is online presence uh, i think every single business needs to be uh, transforming themselves digitally being present online uh, making sure that you know they are working remotely i think these are few of i mean you, you really can't say this is new normal because it's still kind of getting defined but to my mind these are few of the large uh, tenets which will which is going to be defining what new normal is and and it is going to keep changing uh, because you know the next 3 to 6 months to be honest uh, one can't really put a finger and say that this is what is going to happen in the next 3 months or 6 months so it's it's a ever evolving process uh, to my mind uh, and and that's new normal and and that's what we have to learn to live with that you know it's life is going to be changing almost uh, every week every month yeah thanks abhijit a very important point uh, what you are mentioning you know so that uh, i recently heard a word called uh, that we are the generation uh, flux so the generation flux are people a call for people who can live with uncertainty on an everyday basis and deal with it and i think that's what is going to be required in the new normal what you're saying yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh ajay uh, could you give us some examples you know elaborate on those that companies or you know organizations whom you are seeing adopt to this new normal and 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 what are some of the things that you're seeing that they are doing effectively yeah shada first of all i would like to again congratulate you because i saw you know a lot of international uh, audiences are also there in the show you know the I have what I saw. One guy from Kenya is also there. You know, he's, 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 he was giving his own feedback. Coming back to the question <clears throat> again, you know, I'll uh, I'll answer in <clears throat> sorry in two parts. One is you know what our customers are doing, which we are experiencing, and second part is that what how we are enabling our customers uh, to manage the situation and adopt the new situation of new normal. So you know, I, I have seen that. Uh, many of our customers you know they realized that their core business was not working and uh, there were new opportunities you know I, i talked about in the first section that there are new trends new opportunities you know because the customer needs are changing as i said you know indoor is now new, now new outdoor so from that point of view i came across you know it's a small short story you know i came across one customer of ours based out of bangalore and his core business you know which was for the data verification uh, related to Uh, some couple of government projects was not working at all and he saw an opportunity of hand sanitizer and obviously you know he told me that there are thousands of people in india who started and not only in india the globe, across the globe you know who started hand hand sanitizer selling business uh, but you know his story was very different and you know he is a perfect example of you know people who does things simple things in a different way because what he did you know he started selling uh, hand sanitizer refilling activity and in the last 70 days he sold close to 150 ton 
of hand sanitizer uh, in few eight to ten cities in India. Uh, but and you know he used innovative distribution model, you know, to you know leveraging NGOs and especially you know he he talked about a real diversity where he used transgender community to do the distribution by giving them a respectable job, you know, because uh, that's the area you know which he found that you know I, I was able to offer them a respectable job so that they should be able to start working uh, and managing the operations overall. And obviously, I had a good innovative you know, distribution model. And obviously, now, uh, you know, after 70 days, he reached to a stage where you know, he started using our technology, which is IoT, and started thinking that how can I automate the overall hand sanitizer as well as you know, the liquid soap business in the form of refilling business actually across all the corporates. So that's the, you know, the new business model which I, which I came across. Uh, definitely, I also came across a lot of customers, you know, who have started using IoT and started giving anything and everything as a service. For example, the customers are giving tire as a service, you know, whereas the, they're not charging tires. They are saying that now people are not going to buy tires. People are going to use tire services and they will charge, they will pay me, you know, per kilometer. Water as a service, you don't have to buy a water purifier. That's the new business model people have started using it. Battery as a service. I think think about anything and everything as a service people have started using using IoT as a technology. That's the that's the bigger change which which I personally I have experiencing with many of the customers in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, you know the couple of areas where we added value. You know we added value in terms of going digital for the customers. Abhijit talked about that. A lot of these professional retailers. You know you will not imagine that you know dentist, bakery shops, uh, garment distributor. Service provider, you know, these are the kind of guys who are now started going online because they are saying we don't want to depend on the aggregated model. We are not depending on you know the Amazon and Flipkart of the world. We we want to have our own presence online. You know, you know, builders like Rustam Ji during my interaction, they are saying that we are now giving digital tours of their sample flats because people are not going to come outside. But I want to show him that sample flat and using technology, I'm giving a digital tour. Uh, we are we are driving a customer connect program where we are helping you know the segments like banks insurance companies ngos so that they should be able to engage with a larger base of customers using our sip technology uh, because they are making a lot of covid calls they are making a lot of you know the government of india's benefits uh, spread out awareness uh, employee productivity program you know a lot of our it its companies you know we have we have started enabling their workforce you know using our cloud telephony technology where they are able to run campaigns in a very organized manner, in a very controlled manner, so that they are able to see clearly that how many calls a guy is making to how many customers and what is the kind of interest level. And they are able to record those calls and do a lot of data analysis to see that what is the overall effectivity and productivity of my people. So my point is, and obviously learning you know, remotely, uh, you will not believe that every companies, they have started having audio and video calls along with farmers, meaning that each and Indian, rather I would say that Indian farmers are now on audio and video conferencing. You know, they are using technology. Uh, to reach out to the agri companies to know what what is the right activities for them, and all this is happening in the last 70, 80 days. So that's the big change. You know, few stories which have which have emerged uh, on its own, as well as you know, few stories which we are trying to create using our technology. Thank you so much. That's very very interesting, Ajay. What you said that the farmers are using technology. Uh, you know, just yesterday I also heard that uh, 250 kilometers away from Hyderabad, there's a place called Medak, and a farmer from there called and bought a bike. Google searched, went to Cyber Cafe. Google searched and bought a bike. So in interesting times, uh, because they didn't want to travel, they didn't want to use public transport, and it's not even available public transport right now. So yeah, very very interesting observation. Uh, Naveen, to you, I wanted to ask you. So you have been, uh, uh, you have an ongoing association with Vodafone Idea, and uh, now that's like the question. <laughs> uh, what has this partnership meant for you, and how has uh, it helped you lose this partnership. So I'll take one step back. Um, so we were using um, some other uh, provider service and um, for all our IoT devices when we started our business. But uh, what we slowly realized is that provider service was not built for uh, IoT or M2M kind of business, right? Where Communication does not happen over voice. It is all data being exchanged. And uh, we were having a lot of issues, especially when we moved to Maharashtra zone uh, in Pune and other areas. That's when I um, got in touch with a gentleman from Vodafone. And um, they gave a very solid pitch saying, OK, they have a very dedicated platform just to cater to these IoT devices. They call it as M2M. 
and uh, it will be only one single channel manager whom I have to talk with or interact with to get services enabled across India. Uh, that's when we decided, and for us it was a big hit because for all our IoT devices we had to move from one provider to the other provider. But we took that chance because we did not want to go through uh, this change process or dealing with network uh, issues, uh, what we were facing in the other cities where we had launched. That is when we started with Vodafone. And slowly when we started working with them, we realized like Vodafone is providing many other services that, will be, that could be helpful or useful to us. And one of those services was um, our whole business is based on the location of our assets. These are unmanned um, uh, assets which are just lying somewhere, right? And we have to monitor our assets and these are expensive assets. And for that, IoT becomes very important to tell where these assets are, right? Sometimes what happens is uh, because of data connectivity issues or whatever it is, we don't get to know where it is located uh, because of the satellite positioning and things like that. And during that time, when I got in touch with the Vodafone team, they told like they have something called location services using which they can tell the approximate area where our vehicles are. Okay, That particular service helped us a lot uh, to identify or at least tell us, okay, where to look for our assets. Um, so that was the another service. Now we are also in talks with Vodafone where uh, they are providing a service to uh, cater to our uh, customer requirements where if a customer um, gets into any kind of situation or, or, or problems, they can directly reach out to our customer support team, um, but without they knowing, okay, what phone is being used, right? Like a SOS kind of service. So these are some of the things uh, from platform perspective, what we got from Vodafone uh, or where Vodafone has been very um, helpful uh, from the service perspective. On top of it, uh, the biggest thing when it comes to um, us is Vodafone as a team, right? Um, works. Um, I would say that their, their services are very seamless. Okay, let me put it that way. Two days back or three days back, I was having this issue with OTP, right? So we all know, like, government has released a new process of blockchain where everything has to be approved for OTP and things like that. So suddenly one fine day, like our service stopped, we had registered at Vodafone, uh, we were waiting for approval and things like that. For me, it was just a phone call away. I called again my same uh, uh, gentleman who always helps me in all these troubles. And I called him, he told, yes, Naveen, this is not my area, but I will definitely help you. And he, within like six or eight hours, we got the approval. Okay, I don't know how he did it, what he did it, the only thing is I had to put in a request there and then he told, okay, to so so person, can you please take care of it and we got it resolved. So again, that 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 stream or uh, that level of uh, comfort that you can get from, uh, from the providers or the service uh, players, if it is at that level, you feel comfortable working with them, right? So that is the comfort that IDEA or Vodafone guys have given me. Second thing is a uh, lot of times, uh, wherever we are launching our services, network signal strength is not good. At that time also, again, I reach out to the same gentleman and he will basically uh, arrange folks to go over to that location, test it, verify it, ensure that we get proper services in those areas. Yes, there are few times when uh, Vodafone also cannot do anything. But at least uh, from the communication perspective, support perspective, help perspective, they are always upfront. You know, when you were Naveen saying all this, now I was just thinking, who is this gentleman in Vodafone? He should give us all the name, and everyone should go to <laughs> that gentleman. But thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, listening to you, I realized that the requirements are so diverse, no, and so different it's not a very standard requirement and then so what you're saying is that they uh, uh, they customize it to your requirement and are quite responsive yeah yes. interesting yes. yeah okay thank you sorry Shraddha, can i just come in here on on what naveen touched upon on two things and i just wanted to get, kind of take a minute if that's okay with you on uh, on on one thing he talked about was the iot uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of bring it to the uh, attention of everybody. See, uh, 
you know, when anybody talks of a Vodafone or an idea, the first thing that strikes any as a customer is that, you know, this is a mobile service guy, you know, but that's not what we are. You know, we, we are a total telecom service provider. That's one. Number two, when, you know, uh, Naveen was talking about an IoT and, you know, and how is he tracking an M2M SIM, I uh, just wanted to say that, you know, we deal with every part of the platform. So uh, connectivity is only one part of what we deal with, which is what the SIM card would do. But there is a platform behind it. There are devices that we uh, do. Uh, then we also do the managed services part of it. So we manage services on behalf of the customer. So it's an end-to-end -end service that on IoT that we do. Uh, and similarly on the customer service, so thanks, thanks, Naveen, uh, for saying that. Uh, but that's definitely, you know, a central theme uh, for us uh, in, in Vodafone Idea, uh, which we call it a CXX, which is basically a customer experience, uh, you know, journey. Uh, and, and we uh, all are measured on that. So that's very heartening to hear. Thanks. Yeah, over to you, Shraddha. Yeah, you know, if I were in your and Ajay's place, I'll also feel very happy. You know, because entrepreneurs generally don't come out and praise easily. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, not, yeah well, especially hard these days. <laughs> uh, you know, the, so Abhijit, taking on what you said last, right? Like it's not a Vodafone idea, it's not just a telecom service provider. I want to ask you, I want to ask Ajay, uh, in the interest of all the people who are watching and will be watching this, what are some of the ways in which companies can partner uh, and Vodafone is partnering with uh, 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 startups, with SMEs, with you know, enterprises? What are some of the ways they can partner to uh, ensure that they succeed? Probably I'll start and Ajay, you know, you can uh, join in uh, after that. So, so let me kind of break that into two and say that, you know, what is the, uh, what is that we are offering and what are the kind of challenges that, you know, the startup or the uh, SMB customers are facing today? Uh, the first challenge is that, you know, how do we kind of have the ratio of the demand and supply? Second, how do I get in touch with my customer or how do the customer get in touch with us? Uh, how do I take my product and services to the customers that is intending or proposed customers for us? So these are a couple of questions which is bothering everybody and more so in today's scenario. Uh, how we are partnering is, you know, what we call a, a solution in a box for SMB or a startup, uh, which essentially means that, you know, you, you have what you need to get going. Uh, if you're starting up your business uh, and, and what are the elements in this? So, you know, when you're starting up a business or when you have your small and medium enterprise, uh, you need to have your presence online. So we have a service called WebBuddy, uh, which is, you know, in, in half an hour, your site is up, your domain name is up, you can put what you want, uh, you have your connectivity going. Uh, the second thing that you want is that you need uh, somebody who can, you know, where you are, you are advertising your numbers, somebody can come and take your call. We have something called a virtual assistant, uh, which is a cloud-based uh, telephony where, you know, our customers, uh, customer, when they are calling them, uh, you know, this call lands on a virtual desk. Uh, and, and this really cuts across everybody. And it's, it's for even an... Uh, a, professionals or SMEs uh, where they, the call can land at the, uh, at the desk, which is actually virtually managed uh, by us. Uh, and and uh, whether it is an appointment, whether it is a lead, whether it is a journey, whether it is an inquiry, all of that can be kind of taken care of. So that's the second thing that we do. Second, the third thing which is very important and where we partner uh, is uh, with the large organizations is what we do as a G Suite, we call it, uh, which gives right from uh, an email to a storage, to a security, to a collaborative tool. Uh, so all of that is part of the G Suite. Uh, the other thing that, to my mind, which can come very handy with, uh, you know, our startups and, and the, uh, the SME customers especially is, is the cloud telephony. Now today, you know, uh, all of us are working from home. And uh, in respect to the fact that, you know, we had large or small businesses, we used to have our call center set up where, even if there were three or four people who were sitting and kind of managing the customer's call, the queries and inquiries. Now, all these individuals are really sitting out of their home. Uh, how do you really get the customers to get the same experience, which we used to give, say, uh, 90 days back when they were calling a call center, there was, uh, you know, a CRM and, or, or a software where they, everything was noted, uh, things. 
ओके सो आई विल बी सो अगर आप छोटा uh, बिजनेस कर, कर रहे हैं या बड़ा बिजनेस कर रहे हैं इनफैक्ट uh, पहले जब ग्राहक का फोन आता है तो हाउ डू यू टेक दैट कॉल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आज के दिन में वेन यू नो यू आर सिटिंग एक्चुअली एट योर होम हाउ डू यू टेक दैट कॉल इज बिकमिंग वेरी वेरी क्रिटिकल एंड वी हैव अ सोल्यूशन फॉर दैट बहुत सिंपल सोल्यूशन इज देर एंड देन आई काइंड ऑफ हैंड इड ओवर टू अजय टू एक्सप्लेन इट इन डिटेल इज विच इज वॉट वी कॉल अ क्लाउड टेलीफोनी एंड वी आर सेल्स आर यूजिंग इट तो हम हमारे पास uh, हजारों की संख्या में एजेंट्स uh, हैं जो कॉल सेंटर में हैंडल करते हैं और ये हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में है सो इट्स नॉट कि ये हर एक जगह से ही लोग एड, हमें एड्रेस कर रहे हैं हाउ डू वी रियली रीच आउट टू दीज गाइज इज दोल्यूशन वॉट इज नीडेड जब कॉल आया हाउ मेनी कॉल्स आर बींग मेड एक घंटे में कितनी कॉल हुई एंड दिस इज फॉर बोथ आउट गोइंग कॉल एज वेल एज रिसीविंग कॉल हाउ डू यू मॉनिटर दैट कॉल कॉल की क्वालिटी कैसी है अगर कोई चंडीगढ़ में बैठ के कॉल ले रहा है कॉल की क्वालिटी ठीक है कि नहीं अगर एक प्रोसेस है वो प्रोसेस पे वो बात कर पा रहे हैं कि नहीं कर पा रहे हैं ऑल ऑफ दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ क्वालिटी मिशन जो जब हम एक सेंटर पे बैठ के आ, हमारे कॉल सेंटर एजेंट्स या जो ईमेल देखते थे वो जब करते थे तो एक क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस होता था ऑल ऑफ दिस इज नाउ बिकमिंग पार्ट ऑफ अ क्लाउड टेलीफोन so these are couple of things that comes to my mind sada which i think you know each and every irrespective of and it's not only for a startup or an smb even large organization like uh, you know a uh, few of the mncs and and our organization which is pretty large in the sense from number of employee and the customers that we handle these crore customer uh, hum handle karte hain so uh, is tarah ke large scale pe bhi when we are working you know all of these things are coming uh, very very handy I'll hand it over to Ajay to talk a little bit about uh, the digital assets that we have and how do we, uh, you know, get it to use for the SMB and the startups. Just to add what Abhijit has talked about when he asked that how we are doing the partnering. So I would again it be divided into two things. So we are partnering with government as well as we are partnering with large as well as startups also. So a perfect example of partnering with government is that uh, we are working along with government of India. Uh, and along with four more corporates uh, we are working and rather i would say that we are in the process of creating a portal which is called tech saksham you know which the government has already launched it and the portal is going to get on the floor in the next i would say couple of weeks time so tech saksham is a platform you know which is being uh, you know the i would say managed by five corporates and we are we are one of them uh, but owned by ministry of msme again for small businesses including startups and this platform has two elements digital as well as physical and the purpose of this element both in the digital as well as physical platform is to drive adoption of technology in india uh, because still in india you know as compared to china since the comparison is happening with china uh, less than 3% of the companies are fully digital you know this study has been done by government of india uh, so and the and the plan is that how can we drive technology adoption and especially you know during the you know the current time and now we moving forward uh, so that our small businesses should become more efficient more effective and they should start competing with uh, you know especially the chinese company because that's the comparison which we have when we are talking about the technology adoption we are also partnering with large uh, organizations like you know there are uh, security tools uh, you know which called mas 360 you know we are partnering with ibm also partnering with control s from the data center point of view now we are no more as abhijit was talking about a telco telco company we are telco plus plus meaning that beyond telecom services we are also providing it services you know data center services is basically the output of a partnership with control s as but i would say that we are also partnering with startup and it's an opportunity for startups also that if there are any good solutions available so we don't shy away you know in terms of being tied up with them for example Uh, where buddy you know the chabajit was talking about is a clear outcome of a tie up with the startup uh, cloud telephony again is a company called protec you know our, our tie up with the startup company to provide a cloud telephony kind of a product portfolio a lot of security tools uh, where we have tied up you know for example uh, people are worried about their mobile phone externally but people should also worry about you know the the content of the mobile phone and that's what you know that's the security which we are bringing with the help of our one of our startup and how can you secure your content inside the mobile uh, so and and there are many other examples you know the uh, of of partnering with 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 the large as well as startups including government 
I would highlight would like to highlight one point apart from the partnering is that now we are enabling these small businesses, including large. I would say using our data analytics. You know, especially now, again and again, I am saying that indoor is now you know a new outdoor, where you know you need to engage with customers in a more digital manner. Most of our customers, you know, in the, in the they they are engaging with their with their end customers in a very traditional manner, whether it's a retailer or a saloon or or a retailer who is selling a mobile phone or any startup you know when they have to engage with the customers they don't know who's their potential customers but we have you know the data analytics as a product you know which helps you to engage with your potential customer as ajit abhijit was talking about that we are managing close to 30 crore plus customers so we know a lot of demography uh, insights attributes about those customers which we have an approval from government of india that we can use those analytics at an aggregated level not an individual level but at an aggregate level and that's the power of a telecom company which i would urge each each start off you know they should use uh, to reach out to their potential customers so i think that's the kind of partnership i would say which we are building up and we'll keep building up to give more digital solutions to our customers thank you so much uh, ajay you know the thanks to both of you abhijit ajay for sharing this because uh, uh, for me also this is very new information you know all the different services and offerings that you spoke about and uh, especially now like never before i tell in my business i've been doing this for last 12 years and i say unfortunate but in the last 3 months i feel india has become digital india like everything uh, unfortunately is like digital and and we just seeing how everyone is just now using technology because we kept on talking digital india but we seeing it in all the services that you spoke about is required now like more than before more than ever before people will require so thank you for sharing this and i hope uh, uh, you know a lot of people here will get in touch and will get in touch with the gentleman that navin spoke about because he seemed to be the most that's <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> Spider Man of Vodafone. Yes, Spider Man of Vodafone. Uh, okay, so taken a lot. We have taken a lot of time, and 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 I'm being told to rush it, and because it's four fifty three, and we were supposed to have two panel. We have a last question, and you answer it very quickly, Naveen. How are you tracking your success? How is Yulu tracking your success? And with that, Madan, to you, and I'm sorry for the delay. We always look at of our assets. Uh, that is how we track our success. Uh, if our vehicles are not utilized means we are not getting money we are not building a sustainable business so it is just one single word utilization of our assets thank you thank you for the right answer and the quick answer <laughs> utilization of the yulu bikes thank you the uh, madan over to you thank you so much ajay abhijit and navin thank you sita for anchoring the panel so beautifully we now move on to the second panel discussion of the day unfortunately kavita nair chief digital transformation officer won't be able to join us from vodafone idea so i would request ajay and abhijit to stay on and navin also if you join us for q and a at the very end that will be fantastic so we're going to switch topics from business revival to building the digital playbook and joining us now as a new speaker is uh, rohit chatter cto of inmobi rohit please welcome to this panel uh, we are very happy to have rohit he is the cto for enterprise platforms at inmobi he is responsible for the company's technology vision and strategy while co building and executing business strategy go to market and product so that's quite a bit of a portfolio of activities that you have there rohit so my first question to you rohit is um, uh, you've been at the center of this digital transformation but digital transformation is more than technology it's more than product and features it's also about the consumer mindset the employee mindset so what kinds of changes are you seeing in the way people are looking at digital transformation among your customers and among your company what is the mindset and culture change you are seeing over to you rohit yeah so thank you for inviting me for this webinar i would like to actually uh, talk about that inmobi has always been ahead uh, in terms of uh, embracing the technology because we are a technology company uh, it started say, around 2008 and 9 when sms used to be the way of advertising and we have come long way where now we do advertising on a mobile uh, inventory like when you play free games you see ads right those ads are powered by the google facebook or in mobi uh, so we are into ad ad uh, ad business largely and we are an ad technology company now given that the whole india is actually transforming into digital uh, uh, space right if you see 2 years back everybody wanted to push for digital but 
I think it was taking its own time. Everybody were okay with their own businesses in the conventional way that they were running. But if you see now, even the sabjiwala, you know, the guy who is actually vegetable vendor who is carrying it on lorry, if you go and buy vegetable today, he'll show you a QR code. With this COVID-19 situation, it has actually made it a necessity rather than an option. And hence, if you see, and I, I was listening into some of the cases where farmers are directly reaching out, like somebody did a Google bot, right? So all these things have now become a need. And we all say, right, uh, necessity is mother of all invention. So now the whole world is also uh, going to converge onto the internet space. And with this 5G coming in, uh, I think it's going to make it even more swifter and better. Now, one of the examples, like we always talk about Indian government, not so fast and stuff like that, right? But if you see this Jan Shuraksha app that has come up in like two to three weeks, right, when this COVID-19 situation started. And the reason I can talk about it is I was involved from an in-movie capacity perspective. Uh, our founder, which is Naveen, uh, uh, Naveen Tiwari, he was involved uh, in the PMO office where the meetings used to happen at 11 and 12 in the night uh, with the PMO office. And the requirements were evolving every day. And things were getting built, like night you talk, morning people work, evening again you present, again the next day. That's the speed we're talking about now in India. And imagine this government we're talking about, right? And the app was released in probably record time three weeks. From the time the concept started to the time it delivered. Uh, and obviously, we, we played a role in how to design, what should be the components there, and there are multiple companies that were involved. Today, it is use, used as a contact tracer to understand you know, who's talking to whom, who's in the vicinity, how do we find out the density cluster and all those things. That's transformation, I feel, especially in India. If the government has become that agile, right? We have UPI. Now, we, now there is a discussion going on in the government to say that, can we have a central repository of all the uh, citizens or consumers using mobile as a central repository of everything that is happening around so that we'll be able to take uh, either precautionary measure, health measure, uh, or you know, uh, even make SMBs or consumers as a value proposition that's coming back to them. For example, if you have to give a loan, right? can you create a digital score for it? Can a farmer take a loan? by sitting at his own place, right? This central repository of the data can really help transform India completely into a digital space that nobody has thought through. And with that population, it can actually become a, a, a force that is, you know, unstoppable, like, like China. So that's, that's, that's what I, would, I have to say, largely taking an example of how India itself is changing, and especially when you see government taking such steps, I feel very positive about the whole digital transformation. Thank you, Rohit. Yes, there is change everywhere. And uh, your CEO and founder uh, 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 has spoken many times at our events like uh, TechSpux and Naveen Tiwari. And uh, my next question to you is on uh, this whole digital playbook. Now, you've been digital from day one, but as you mentioned today, many companies are being forced to go digital. So what's your advice on how to go digital for these other companies? How do they come up with a digital playbook? What are the phases? What are the steps? Maybe you can share your example, and then I'll turn to Ajahn Abhijit to share some of their insights into going digital. So tell us a bit more about yeah, so, what does going digital mean? Thanks. Sure. sure, with companies like Vodafone who are providing all these services, which enables you to you know get on get into the digital business almost immediately, like you know having a data center, get your app ready or a web ready. You can start marketing. You can start selling. So that's 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 the first step, right? You need to make your digital presence. Uh, aware, right? First, you have to be digitally enabled, which means you, if you are, say, you are, if you have goods to sell or you have services to sell, you need to have the right uh, uh, digital presence so that consumers can reach out to you. The second that is required is awareness, right? Earlier, we used to have a print media where we say, hey, we opened the store here and there, right? Now, given that you know people gonna order online, you need to be uh, reaching to the masses to say, hey, I am now into this business and I can reach out. To, to your needs as a consumer. So these are the first two steps to even start any business. One, the setup, which is in the now you know cloud, which people understand cloud as something magical, but now cloud has made sure that you don't have to shell out too much money upfront in this initial setup. Uh, I remember a couple of uh, you know years back, 
Uh, people used to talk about setting up website will be required. Oh, how many servers do I need? Uh, which data center should I open? Which OS I should take? I need this software, that software. Now these are all packaged together. And you pay as per your use that uh, your business can afford. You don't have to pay upfront too much money, which means that it allows you to uh, expand your business as you grow. It, it, it can cost you accordingly. So that's the ROI part that's going to come out, right? So cloud, adopting cloud, adopting cloud apps, and making sure that you make your goods, uh, like in a big terms, it's called uh, you know, uh, enterprise planning. But you can actually make sure your inventory is well aware to the people, use the services which are available for shipping and all those things, and you will be in business pretty soon. Uh, uh, before you can even think of, within a month, you, you will be shipping goods uh, and making sure that you know, your customers are happy. Thank you, Rohit. Let me ask our friends from Vodafone to chip in here a little bit. Uh, maybe, Abhijit, you can say a bit about a digital playbook. How should companies adopt a digital playbook? As you mentioned in your previous panel, many companies are accelerating digital transformation for the first time. So what are some of your tips, suggestions on a digital playbook? And I'm just trying to kind of say an, an add on to what Rohit said on, you know, how do we kind of go on to the online and all. And that's exactly what I spoke about when I spoke about, say, our web buddy, which is something which can be really off the hook immediately. <clears throat> Matlab, agar, uh, kisi ko, because I, I saw a request of bilinguals, I'm kind of mixing Hindi and English, and I, I believe that's okay. Uh, so, if someone is starting a new business, and they are the most important thing in any way, they are not starting a business, and they are not starting a business, and they are an existing business, and in today's time, if there is an existing business, so the biggest thing is, which is the most important and critical thing is, that how do you get in touch with your customer? And digital, to my mind, is really uh, a way of solving uh, an issue. You know, and, and it can be uh, anything. So all of that comes under digital, and we are actively participating with the with our own services, or we are getting into a collaboration, whether Google ke saath ho ya ki ya or bhi kisi company ke saath ho. Jaise hum G Suite dete hain, to agar aapko Rohit keh rahe the ki cloud hai, so you don't have to really go and put a server. Aapko apna server khareedne ki zarurat nahi hai. Aap एक जी सीट लेते हैं दो ढाई हजार रुपए का महीने करंट होता है उसमें ईमेल मिल जाता है उसमें आपको स्टोरेज मिल जाता है सिक्योर सर्विस है सो ऑल ऑफ दैट इज अवेलेबल राइट नाउ गोइंग बैक टू व्हाट यू नो हाउ वी आर रियली लुकिंग एट डिजिटल एंड एंड हाउ डिजिटल एडॉप्शन हैज चेंज कपल ऑफ थिंग दैट आई से एंड 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 आई स्टार्टेड थिंक कि ये जो डिजिटल है ये दिस इज नॉट ओनली फॉर अ स्मॉल और मीडियम एंटरप्राइज और अ स्टार्टअप इवन वी आर एडॉप्टिंग एंड आई टेक टू एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दैट वन यू नो प्री कोविड एंड पोस्ट कोविड अगर मैं देखूं तो जो हमारे कस्टमर्स का डिजिटल और यू नो इट्स अ जनरल नॉलेज दैट 80 85% ऑफ द बिजनेस इज अ प्रीपेड बिजनेस व्हिच यूज्ड टू बी यू नो व्हिच हैज ग्रोन आई विल से डिजिटली जो लोग फिजिकली जाके रिचार्ज कराते थे uh, वो हैज ग्रोन टू टू एक्स मतलब डबल हो गया तो अगर पहले 35% या 40% लोग डिजिटल से रिचार्ज करते थे और 60 परसेंट लोग जा करके और फिजिकली रिचार्ज कराते थे दैट हैज बिकम डबल सो यू कैन इमेजिन एंड दीज आर नंबर्स सिंस आई कांट शेयर द एग्जैक्ट नंबर्स आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एग्जांपल सो सो दैट्स अ बिग बिग चेंज और वो चेंज दो रीजंस है ऑब्वियसली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की कैपेबिलिटी टू सस्टेन दैट काइंड ऑफ अ डिजिटल एसेट द सेकंड इज द वे इन द वे कस्टमर्स आर चेंज देयर बिहेवियर एंड द ईज विद व्हिच दे आर वांटिंग टू डू दिस सो दैट्स वन एग्जांपल व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी क्लियर और ये तो मैं प्रीपेड की बात कर रहा हूँ अगर मैं एस और पोस्टपेड की बात करूँ देर ऑल्सो वी सी अट्टी सिक्स इन दी डिजिटल रजिस्ट्रेशन सो जैसे हमारा ऐप uh, है जिसको हम एम वी ए बोलते हैं माई वोडाफोन ऐप वैसे ही बिजनेस के लिए हमारा ऐप है जिसको हम माई वोडाफोन फॉर बिजनेस बोलते हैं सो दैट पेनिट्रेशन एंड कस्टमर्स रजिस्ट्रेशन हैज गॉन अप बाई फिफ्टी सिक्स फिफ्टी सेवन परसेंट इन द लास्ट एटी नाइनटी सो दैट्स द option that is happening the other thing is which you know which which i wanted to share is how are we you know even uh, you know an, uh, a large organization where we have 10000 people uh, and in enterprise in fact today uh, we have launched something called enterprise sales management system uh, or jaise uh, hamare sales ke log hain jab field mein jaate hain and this can be used i mean we uh, by anybody this model can be used by anybody and that's one of the simple example of of going digital 
is when you are in the field, you know, आप कस्टमर से मिलते हैं वॉट इज द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट यू आर गिविंग आपको कोई कोर्ट देना है तो आप क्या वहां से दे सकते हैं आपने कोई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइन किया हाउ कैन यू रजिस्टर इट इन दैट पोर्टल इफ देर इज अ रिन्यूअल ऑफ हमारे केस में लिंक का रिन्यूअल होता है सो ऑल ऑफ दैट इज नाउ द मोबाइल डिवाइस एंड एंड इट्स रियली नॉट अबाउट सेइंग कि ये ऑटोमेट हो गया इसलिए डिजिटल हो गया ये कस्टमर के और सेल्स के लोगों के प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व किया इसलिए डिजिटल हो गया सो देर इज अ डिफरेंस एंड देन दैट्स द a uh, journey that we have started now doing uh, you know which which gives a very fair idea to to the uh, audience here on, on what are the opportunities that is there and the other thing is what is the scale uh, look at the scale aap aaj ke din mein uh, see courier service is not too expensive uh, and and what is the need for a person sitting in say a nagpur or a uh, trichy to only sell products there uh, so so you know digital is also going to kind of blend the boundaries Rohit, you're right at the cutting edge of digital. So, what are some other technologies in your basket right now? What are some other tools? Artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning. People are talking about AR, VR, blockchain, and so on and so forth. So, in your cockpit, as you see the whole digital landscape accelerating, what are some other technologies that you're looking at, and what are some insights you can share with the audience on how to use these kinds of technologies? With the explosion of digitization, there's an explosion of data, right? And the data is the key to any artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm uh, earlier we used to have people who will do analytics and tell you you know what can be done but that was a small size data right in the in the new world it cannot be humans who will be looking at data day in day out because the data itself is changing so fast right so uh, obviously deploying the artificial intelligence based systems will generate the roi right roi for for your customers will generate an roi for your business right so a uh, lot more people are actually now moving to cloud based technologies where the scale goes up and down based on the need of the business they are leveraging the people uh, for doing more automation rather than saying hey i got an alert hey i need to call that and if you see some of it is already happening you get an automated call you get an automated uh, service of on bunch of those things right but that is moving even further ahead right and largely uh, and I, i'll take an example of say vodafone or airtel or any of those things uh, the companies like vodafone and airtel are sitting on gold of data right now imagine they 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 convert they they take this as a data pool build an ai service on top of it right and now says hey all the smes can come and use our portal and uh, for the people who are not tech savvy we will generate insights for their business to be able to say hey go reach out to these kind of customers because they will re- they will generate more revenue for it and will be more satisfied customers or these are the uh, customers that you already have right because of the, all the telephony and bunch of those information based on the integrated suite they can now let business guys focus on the business and not get worried about this whole technology thing so imagine the technology becomes a part of your uh, working without really understanding the technology which means the technology will go in the background for you to be able to empower you with all the businesses insights that you have and that things that you understand so obviously with this all these things the trust becomes an issue for example i was trying to set up a home gym right and i i go uh, uh, go on india mart look for something punch in my number and say this is what i'm looking for and i get a call from merit now uh, a, a typical you know indian mindset is oh merit se aaya sir pata nahi saman aayega nahi aayega right uh, what if i give 1 lakh rupees saman nahi aaya to now the biggest thing in this whole digital transformation is that technology has to bring in the trust of the consumers राइट right? क्योंकि लोगों को ये कि दुकान पे जाके बोलूंगा ये सामान अच्छा नहीं है मेरे को रिटर्न देगा आर्ग्यू कर लूंगा डिस्कस कर लूंगा जो भी कर लूंगा हाउ कैन टेक्नोलॉजी बिकम सो मच इन द बैकग्राउंड दैट एक्चुअली रिप्लेसेस द ह्यूमन इंटरेक्शन राइट टू द लेवल वेयर इट ब्रिंग्स इन ट्रस्ट नाउ वन ऑफ द थिंग्स इज यू हैव अ वेबसाइट यू कैन कॉल दैट नंबर द गाय पिक्स अप एट एनी टाइम एज अ कॉल सेंटर हैज अ वेबसाइट कैन चैट विद हिम Uh, and you will see immediately you will see uh, people on phone numbers start doing whatsapp and all the details now how do you capture all these things put together and create a detailed track for a consumer to get their trust this is where technology will play a role this is where the machine learning will play the role because they will be able to tell you 
whether this customer is going to be happy or not happy, whether the existing customers are happy or not, or whether the new customers, where will you get the new customers from? Like today, so India is one of the biggest places where small medium businesses are the highest, right? Everybody is kind of an entrepreneur. Even a, a small shop you know, down the road is an entrepreneur. He knows how to make the margin come out, right? Now imagine the same needs to be transformed into a digital space, right? With machine learning algorithm, because this guy is not going to spend time understanding technology. He wants to focus on making his, his shop available to a wider uh, diameter so that he can reach to those services. And if you see the like MedLife and then these guys have actually solved those problems, right? Pharmacists are now facing problems with them. This is where our technology is shifting leaps and bounds. Actually, every four months and six months, we see a huge shift in how we enable each of these customers to focus on their business and not spend too much time understanding technology and hire those tech people. So I feel the, the next three to five years is going to be a transformation that we all going to witness. Like my father today, who is 75, feels little alienated saying that, ki, yaar, ye sab kaise ekdam surprisingly ho hai. I'm sure when I am 75, there will be a lot of drones running around and I'll be like, I don't want to see it in our lives, but I don't want to see it. Very good, Naveen. It's very tough to, sorry, Rohit. Very good to, to hear these perspectives. It's hard to find a technology person who can talk business language the way you do. So uh, my last question, which has also come in from the audience, by the way, and I'll ask Ajay also this question. The audience question is, um, uh, it's so confusing when you see so many technology options. How do you choose? How do you prioritize? Which technology to use for which business problem? So maybe Rohit, you can share some of your quick in just a minute or so, a couple of tips. And then Ajay, maybe you can show, share some advice to the audience on how to prioritize which technology goes with which business problem. So Rohit, over to you. So I would I would suggest to the people first to identify because it's very, it, it, it cannot be a generic answer. All I can say is you have a specific business, you need to first list down what are the uh, crucial part of your business. Is it the good selling? Is it the services? What is it, right? Is it the consulting, uh, whatever that may be. Then you need to figure out what are the services available in the market, on the cloud, with the reliable, uh, you know, uh, vendors, right? Once you identify and map your business components to the services that are available in the digital space, then you create a list of services that come together to create a coherent view for your business. That's how I would suggest, it's very difficult for me to say, like, if you're in the goods section, then you need an inventory management software, right? If you're in a consulting services, you need a, a call management and RFP based uh, uh, system, right? Obviously, you need a call center, website, and all those things. Each business has to be broken into components. Look for a mapping of the business applications that are available, which are in a coherent way. And then make a plan saying that, okay, if I have this, in the real world, I was doing A, B, C, D. Can I do the same thing A, B, C, D, now go here, play that role of a consumer, go the other side of the world that if I was to make a business with this particular company, what problems will I face and how will I reach to this? And then they will be able to actually map and figure out these are the business applications that make it work. Just don't go by everything that is on the market on the shelf because it will just confuse it. Keep it to minimalistic. Ensure that whatever services you put out, it works. Because your trust is when the service works. Imagine I call a number, it doesn't work. Imagine I go to a site and it doesn't load. Right? Now it breaks the trust. Because trust is where the consumer is going to go. Like for example, if I go to Amazon, I know that something is a bad product. They will replace it without asking. Right? And tomorrow if the same consumer comes to you and something doesn't work, you lost it. Now that consumer will never come back because you can't even talk to the person. Correct. Thanks, Sohit. So, yeah. So map and then match. That's a good way to proceed. Map your business needs and match it to the technologies that you have. So let me ask Ajay. Now, Ajay, uh, you in your previous panel, you mentioned a very wide range of technology options that uh, Vodafone Idea is offering. What's your advice for companies in how to prioritize which technology to use for which problem? You want to answer that, Ajay? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So I think Rohit, Rohit rightly said that you know there is no prescription which is available. That you know as a doctor, I'll say that you know this is the problem and you know take this medicine. So first of all, you know, the I think the businesses needs to know that what changes, you know, they want to make. Uh, and the first is, you know, that how can they make their customer journeys more seamless? Because especially, you know, during COVID and after COVID, uh, the service is one key differentiation element, you know, according to me. Uh, 
uh, which you know the customers are going to look for because customer wants that i should be able to get a better service and and a trust so now if if those are things you know which which the which each small business or large business needs to drive then they need to see that how can they make their customer journeys more simpler more seamless uh, technology is available all over the world you know the and as rohit was talking about you know, there are too many technological solutions which are available but you need to choose what is right for you and obviously that you will come to know once you know what is the problem which you want to solve in your organization like, because you can't solve all the problems in one go so you have to pick up the problems which you want to solve and according to me digitization you know it starts for starts from the mindset change of the people who are working in that organization if the company is not digital and then obviously you need to automate because you know the startups obviously they are born digital but the large organizations you know who have traditional uh, business processes you know the legacy systems so they can't get rid of those legacy systems and business processes so easily and obviously people uh, makes a lot of difference and if the people mindset doesn't change so that's the starting point and the second part is that what well as i said you know what problem in your business which you want to solve first to make it automate so that the customer becomes uh, you know it becomes easy for customers to deal with you uh, i think the another part which i want to highlight is that technology is available in the current scenario technology is pretty affordable you know we have a data center service the same data center is being used by companies like uber the same data center is being used by any small organization who have just started their operations today which which means that the technology is actually really uh, very very affordable uh, but you need to know that what technology i need to use it for my business processes how should companies prioritize so navin you want to just answer that one in just a minute or so yeah so so I, i agree with what rohit is mentioning like you have to look at what technologies are there what are your priorities and based on that map the requirements on both the fronts uh, so says there is nothing much to add but that is how you should be prioritizing what is your need what is your requirement and what is available let's map with that and move on okay so go backwards from the business problem to the technology thanks thanks yeah. thanks navin uh, so okay abhijit back to you now sorry for the interruption but abhijit would you like to wrap up with the, a few words of advice for our audience on digital transformation digital playbooks yeah uh, thanks uh, and, and so i think you know wrap it's a pretty good session to uh, have uh, you know different perspectives coming in and and to my mind what is really critical is what we were discussing towards the end to say that you know uh, what is that we are solving for uh, and and that becomes the central theme so customer you know and and ajay said uh, that cash is not king then cash is god uh, i think uh, cash and customer both of them are god Uh, because you know uh, probably the the cash comes from the customer uh, and from that point of view you know everything has to be centered around the need of the customer and all that we spoke about today whether it is for smb or startup or the large organization it is to make sure that the customer is kind of taken care of whether it is on an engagement level it is at a new product level or you know it is at a solution level uh, we will keep developing uh, new things we'll keep partnering with you know uh, the technology company uh and we'll keep serving our customers uh, is is what i'll say uh and, and digital uh, you know as we all said uh, is a mindset uh and it's it's uh, this is the time uh, if if we are not really going digital irrespective of the size of the organization uh then probably you know uh, as an organization we'll be thing of past thank you ajay and abhijit from uh, vodafone thank you rohit from inmobi thank you navin from uh, yulu thanks to my colleague shraddha for moderating the earlier panel and to wrap up this discussion i would just end up by saying the three p's profits partnership and playbook have a good playbook have a good digital strategy choose good partnerships uh, you had very well examples from vodafone idea on how they can be a good partner and last but not least profit we just heard from ajay who said and abhijit also who said cash is not just king but cash is god so keep profits in mind so profit playbook and partners with that we come to the end of our session thank you all very much please do join us again for a regular webinars and tip to please do please get in touch with vodafone for any future digital communication needs of yours thank you all have a very good evening and i see you next time